Some of these slides are showing this morning, so I may skip through. Um, as we said this morning, there is no much use of arterial graft, so we still rely on a lot of vein graft. What is the problem? The problem I showed this slide this morning is very big because there are more than two million procedures done, and the failure rate is very high. This is a saphenous vein from a patient when you actually put it in. This is an example of a vein graft which has gone down probably within a few hours from the surgery because of all these blobs are platelets, and this is uh, really an early thrombus. So this is acute thrombosis. Later on, you get intimal proliferation, which is here, so you get a very thick stuff filling the lumen of the vessel, and this is all is left. This is a graft they're removing somebody 10 years after the surgery. Then there are other way of failure like this, for example, which is all lipid, or fat. It's like, I'm sure you've seen it in redo, it's like uh, toothpaste coming out. And then there are situations in which you got uh, literally a calcium plaque which may rupture, and if you rupture, you can have acute blockage. So to start with, you get an early failure, which is mostly related to uh, acute thrombosis, and we know that if you give aspirin, particularly if you give aspirin PR two or three hours after the surgery, this can be reduced. The bit in the middle, uh, I'm afraid there is nothing to my knowledge which works. So this process, once the vein it works into a higher pressure system, it gets thicker. To my knowledge, there is nothing which in clinical uh, practice, in a clinical scenario, is provided to produce any reduction or any evidence on this. In the long term, there is quite strong evidence that if you give patients uh, a lipid lowering agent, it will improve patency rate. And this is something which I think this and this we all do quite aggressively in our clinical practice. As I mentioned before, however, when you look at patency rates, is you go from one stream to the other. I mentioned this study this morning which had a failure rate of 45% at 12 to 18 months. I think, honestly, these people should be stopped from doing surgery because it's unacceptable. Then you got something a little better. This is a more recent paper, which is again is a 30% failure rate, even when they had a, a Doppler system to check if the graph were all patent at the time they closed the chest. I think this is still very high. And then I show this remarkable paper from this group, which is being quoted this morning several times, with a failure of 2%. So there has to be something in between but certainly a failure of 40% is totally unacceptable. We now got much better way to detect uh, the behavior of the graft. In the past, we could only rely on one thing, which was angiography. And angiography just show you something which is open or closed or a bit of a narrowing. Now, for example, you can have this, which is MRI, and you can have different patterns. For example, here I show uh, a calcium plaque whereas this is a graft which is, perfectly, which is completely blocked, and this is a patent graft. And this is a relatively non-invasive technique, apart from some contrast which you have to give to patients. So we got now a much better understanding than we had 10 or 20 years ago, when most of the study on saphenous vein graft failure were actually done. Again, then what happened in the long term? And uh, I am now a strong believer that in the long term, things are not bad as they used to be. I showed this graph this morning. This is a multiple slice CT, which was used to reinvestigate at eight years uh, 400 patients who had undergone on or off pump surgery. And this is what I want you to concentrate, which again, I showed it earlier on there was a patency rate of 87% at eight years. So it's nothing like you know half of the graft are gone and they are not working. A lot of these grafts are very good. And this work, there were four surgeons involved, nobody exceptionally super surgeon, just ordinary people who do ordinary coronary surgery every day of the week. And again, it's not just in Bristol, as I show it earlier on, and then I promise my next slide will be different. The patency rate in these two big studies, again, randomized, was similar to ours. So the situation is not as bad as it used to be. 
There is still a problem, but the problem is not, in my view, even remotely like the literature from the 80 and the 90. Surgeons are immensely better. We got better technique, we got better instrument, we got better everything compared with when I trained as a senior registrar. We got aspirin, we got lipid lowering agent, and now we got clopidogrel to add to the mix. However, there is no reason not to try to make it better. And to a certain extent, coronary surgery is almost a perfect thing for experimental work because you take a vein, whether you use endoscopic or, or, or open, and you got that vein to play with perhaps for as much as half an hour before you put it in as a bypass graft. This is the kind of things we see very often in most of the operating theater. You take the vein, you then put a cannula, attach a syringe, and you blast it with something. It may be blood, it may be saline, you choose it. Now, I'm sure if I tell you uh, uh, the pressure which you generate with this syringe, you will not believe me. The pressure you generate into this vein is two and a half atmosphere. We translate in millimeter of mercury, which you are more familiar, is in excess of 2,000 millimeter of mercury. So it's at least 10 times higher than the worst scenario of what is going to happen once is in a patient who may get a blood pressure of 200 millimeter of mercury. And this is an area where we have been interested in, uh, in Bristol. We, we got no doubt from our experience that poor technique is one of the main reasons for failure. This is whether it's the surgeon who takes the vein, the surgeon who does the anastomosis, but if you maltreat the vein, you can expect to have a high patency rate. And harvesting of the vein, we truly believe, is very important. Unfortunately, most of the time, is the job reserved for the most junior member of the surgical team. There are other factors like poor runoff and, of course, progression of atheroma because atheroma progress in everybody, even on me and all of you, until you actually die. So it's inevitable that this will progress. Our work shows very clearly two things. One is if you blast the vein, you disrupt all the media. The media is the thick layer which virtually make the bulk of the vein. And if you handle the vein very badly, you will damage the inner layer, the endothelium, which is very protective, particularly in terms of early failure, early graft occlusion. And we demonstrate that all of these can quite easily be avoided. How is it done? Effectively, the vein is taken out of the leg, paying some degree of attention, and then the vein is attached to a sidearm of the arterial cannula before you go on bypass. If you do off-pump, you can do a proximal anastomosis, which is exactly the same things. Then you distend the vein at the pressure of the patient. So you're not going to blast this vein, and you're going to distend it at whatever pressure is going to, to work. It's even useful, actually, to measure the length of your graft. Uh, we did this work a long time ago, 1987. We then validated this in an animal model, but we could never do a proper randomized study. Why? Because predominantly, not predominantly, because the only way to assess this was looking at patency rate, and the only mean was angiography. First of all, no many people wanted to have an angiogram uh, when they are well and walking around at 12 months. And second, because with the angiogram, unless you repeat angiogram, which is even worse, you just get a snapshot at that precise time. And thirdly, there was uh, the problem that you need an hell of a lot of patients. Probably you're talking at least of 1,200 patients, which is a lot of patients to reinvestigate, hence is very expensive. However, now there are, again, much sophisticated technique. For example, this is intravascular ultrasound. Intravascular ultrasound is as bad as angiography or angiogram because it's invasive. You have to put something down the graft and then you can reconstruct it all three-dimensionally. But the advantage of ultrasound is then it can give you an idea of what is happening in the wall of that blood vessel, for example, at 12 months. So you can have a pretty good idea whether whatever treatment you use in the form of a drug or a surgical intervention is going to work or not. And from that you can derive, hopefully, a large randomized study, which although is going to be very expensive, at least it may have a better chance to work. 
And this is what we've done recently in Bristol. This study is actually concluded. The analysis is in progress, so I can't give you any, in, any, in, any data. But the bottom line is this. This was what the statistician called a factorial randomized trial. It's a complex way by which you can reduce number. So we had 96 patients, and we look at two specific surgical technique. The first one was to compare blast in the vein, as is done in most places, with a syringe. And the second one was just distending at what is called systemic normal pressure. The second intervention was to take the vein either like this, which is a bit like naked vein, most of the stuff is being removed, or like a pedicle. You will hear about this later on. There is some evidence that if you have a pedicle of vein, so all the adventitia is preserved, they may, be, they may behave better, particularly in the long term. And here, what we're doing is simply to look at one year's angiography as well as intravascular ultrasound. All the patients is now being, have now been restudied, and uh, we wait for the analysis, which should come out in the next two or three months. There have been other uh, suggestions. You heard about our experience with a, poly, um, with a Dacron stent. Uh, it works beautifully. In fact, I even managed to publish a paper in Nature on that. Unfortunately, when we use it in human beings, this stuff is too, st is too uh, stiff, and most of the time you end up with the graft kinking. So, no way, it wouldn't work. There, is, there are some others idea. I think you will hear the next presentation about similar stents, and the results are all very promising in animals. Whether it will work in human, I don't know. And more recently, another study has been uh, started in Canada, which is aimed at looking at a different solution to put inside the, the vein when you prepare it, because the idea is if you block some particular process taking place in the endothelium, uh, you will reduce the occurrence of acute graft failure. So, in short, we had a pretty bad situation in the past, in the 80 and the 90. I think we got quite a good situation at present in terms of vein graft, vein graft patency, but of course we have to strive to make it better. And to make it better, I'm afraid, we need the help of the scientists because we as surgeons are literally the technician doing the procedure, but these are the guys who hopefully will tell us how to do it and how to improve what, as we heard this morning, is used in the majority of cases, or rightly or wrongly, of graft. Thanks very much.